you know, we're one uh, we're one member of this podcast away from having to name ourselves the Real Racing Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have a span of, I think, two shows here next month. I mean, you could. Where we that that will you be. Could. Yeah. You could. What if we just <laughs> create a whole new feed, totally f up the, <laughs> f, the fake racers podcast algorithm to care. rename it, it for a gag? For no, Do God it. no. <laughs> Who cares? No, we're not doing half bad. We can't <laughs> like that, or we gotta find somebody else who races something, so then just we can become Tommy. the real racers podcast. Just Tommy Bordeaux. Tommy. Just get oh, yeah, Tommy. We, could, we gotta Tommy. see if we can get Tommy. I feel like yeah. we can get Tommy. Mister Busy might Pants. have to. Might have to record a little bit later, but we can sanction that. I can I yeah. can concede to the California conglomerate. <laughs> <laughs> it might be necessary, yeah. Do we know yeah, anybody else who races anything? Um We know people who work for race teams. Yeah. So that kinda counts. You could say they're a racer. But like, not a driver. But would they actually say anything? Uh That's why I always say worry. any of the juicy stuff. Well that's so, you know, people like like every, no one wants to be like inside baseball, you know, like yeah, because there's like fear of like losing job or status or trust is the big thing, right? Because mm-hmm. you want to know those things, but you don't necessarily need to tell them to people. Um, I don't know. That was you, it, like it felt like you started a point and then you just didn't finish it. <laughs> That's ninety five percent of the time. Now, when I yeah. start finishing points, this show is going to take off. You know. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be like, "Holy crap! This Joe guy finally." He has actually opinions. got to the point. That's crazy. <laughs> if if we were an improv troupe, Joe would be the guy who sets up every scenario. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm the setup man. That's all I do. The problem is, and you brought it up recently, Matt. I just don't yes and like I. I just, <laughs> I just, I just like, will shut it down if I don't like it. Like, I'm very not helpful. No, you, just, you you're, you gotta you very much no, but uh. no, but <laughs> it's true. Um, folks, this is Fake Racers Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Make sure if you haven't already, drop a like, subscribe, follow us on your podcast feed platforms or whatever. Um, Spotify, thanks for making us switch things up. Appreciate you. Congrats on having a new user account because that's why you did it. Don't lie to us. We know. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyways, fun. I'm Joe. Yeah. I'm Davey. I'm Matthew. Where you at? They oh figured it out. It only took them like three yeah. seconds. And when I cut the audio, it it'll sound, sound like great. It perfectly. Exactly. <laughs> be so snappy if if you want to hear how it actually sounds watch the video on track and turf on youtube that's that's the raw unedited video feed um cut so you know frp uncensored we should we should market it like that (laughs) for the uncensored version yeah and also this is just davy taking the, the little pauses out when we don't understand what the other people are saying. <laughs> this ain't your grandma's podcast. <laughs> well, I was like, originally I was going to do like JTN unhinged and we were going to be like cursing and stuff. And I think we did it once and it, Ricky and I, I don't think we said a single curse. And then Tommy got up there in the booth and he's just throwing F-bombs left and right for fun. Because yeah, like, I think it was that truck. It was, it was that a truck, truck race at Kansas. At Topeka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Topeka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember because I won that race. Yeah. That was a great race. Tommy and I were like both in the grass on the white black line. <laughs> yeah, unhinged, <laughs> and it was just a normal broadcast. Yeah, because we, we weren't <laughs> sure. Because really, what that the whole point of that was to get Ricky to like show Ricky the ropes of how to like run the cameras and stuff and whatnot. Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyways, uh, side tangent aside, not to put people to sleep <laughs> like the uh, like the All Star race did, but uh, oh. let's 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 just get right into it. Uh, Joey Logano. Yeah, he. That was 199 a, of 200 laps. <laughs> so yeah, it was looking, a little boring. Looking at the results sheet is it's truly funny. Like the laps column is almost completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, what like, what do we what, what can we really say about that? What a snoozer. The worst part is, I mean, there were guys that were able to drive up through the field, right? Kyle Larson had to start at the back. Bubba Wallace started mm-hmm. at the back. They both finished inside the top ten. I think Bubba was sixth and Larson was Would have been fourth. nice if we saw that. Well, yeah. 
Um, but the pageant, but the pageantry of North Wilkesboro Speedway. Um, yeah, I I do think like the crowds have been strong enough the last two years now that I feel like North Wilkesboro has solidified itself a spot on the Cup schedule in some way. I'm still begging for an Xfinity race there, but regardless. Well, um, but I was gonna say I, you could do a standalone Xfinity race with like Cars Tour, like oh yeah, really for easily sure. do it. I don't know August. September, like, do it later in the season to kind of give those teams a break from all the travel yeah. all over the place, right? I think that's that's where races like this should fit into the schedule. These races that are close to home, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, kind of having them back to back like they do. I mean, we we're running three straight races in the Carolinas. Yeah, you know, true. Like, there's there is a benefit to that, but also it's not the same benefit as like the West Coast Swing had, right? Where you know you kind of you went out there and you stayed out there. Um, these mm-hmm. you're, you're home and you stay home for a couple of weeks, which is also good because you get like a long period of time at home if you're on the road cruise. But also, I think it'd be nice to kind of have those laid out. I don't know. I don't take my vacations three weeks at a time, but maybe other people like that more. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but going back to my original point, like it is like I I am excited to see more of North Wilkesboro. Obviously, I think like everyone knows about the shortcomings of this car on short tracks, but. I think that may have. I think that may have been the worst short track race with the next gen car, bar maybe like one Martinsville race. Like that was, that was pretty abysmal, and it's really unfortunate that it comes right when we decide to uh, revitalize a beloved track to most of the fan base. Yeah, the thing too that I, I just had to go look it up to be sure, um, because last year's All Star race was almost the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like. It, it does bum me out that like we we revive this historic place and then the two times we brought cup here it's been an absolute stinker um i don't necessarily think the track is to blame i think it's a matter of like we said like the next gen short track package is like a, a special type of ass and then <laughs> i think i think the fact that this was a repaved track might have contributed to it too because the corner speeds were just so friggin fast it just visually looked so fast. Um, yeah. And, I mean, this is two years in a row. So, Logano led all but one lap. He started from pole. Last year, the two people who led laps were the pole sitter and Kyle Larson. Like, that was it. And Kyle Larson so, got out front because of a pit call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it reminds me yeah, a lot of, um, like you said, Martinsville last year, the race where it was basically whoever got the lead via pit stops was just going to hold on to it the entire time. Um, yeah. And I don't know what the solution is, because, like, I mean, how many short track races have we run right now? This has got to be at least a dozen at this point, and it's not getting better. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, the other thing. It's a, it, good. I was going to say, the other thing to do, too, is throw Bristol out of the equation when you were talking about the short track package, because they run a different yeah. package at Bristol. Um, mm-hmm. But you could probably, you can lump in probably Phoenix and New Hampshire, I feel like. I know, I know the debate about they're not short tracks, uh, but I feel like... Is could... Bristol a different package? I thought Bristol was the... I believe... Bristol is so much Cause I know, different, Because I know though, Richmond right? isn't the short track package. Richmond isn't? No. Remember, because we wanted... Everyone was saying, like, no, you can't make any judgments on the short track package at Richmond. You have to wait for Martinsville, because it's not at Richmond or whatever. It all sucks. It, is, it, is it all sucks. Confusing. The small tracks... The problem is... Matthew alluded to it. It's the corner speed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the big the, the common denominator is it's all the flat tracks. The yeah. flat tracks have been really bad. You look at Richmond's been pretty good. Bristol's been really good. Those are both tracks that have a lot of banking. So, well, Richmond doesn't have a lot, but it has some, you know. And like yeah. you mentioned, they've run a different package there. Richmond's yeah. marginally better than like Martinsville. Martinsville is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I mean that makes sense too because even Phoenix, like Phoenix turn three and four at phoenix is relatively banked but one and two is not really banked at all so it makes sense um i also want to say like i, I want to just jump into the option tire conversation because there was a big talking point heading into the weekend and there was a lot of excitement um after the practice sessions i think we got a false read just because we practiced during the day in the heat of the summer in the carolinas and then we were raced at night i mean it was it was nice to be hopeful, but it kind of was about what I expected personally. Um, 
you know, after the... Because I think it was Rodney Childers was saying, like, it's crazy these tires barely lasted 40 laps on, you know, whenever they practice. And now, like, the, the those soft tires, they lasted over 100 laps in the race, which is insane. Yeah. Makes you wonder what, um, what Goodyear's doing with the compounds and kind of the... So... You have well, that was the rain tire compound, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I'm saying if for them to be so reactive to temperature. So a lot, mm. you know. I, I again, I don't know how rubber compounding works. I know how different plastic compounding works, and you have like you have a catalyst that you mix in, and that kind of helps like reactions occur. I don't know if it's the same thing with rubber in this mm. case, but I wonder if there's something that they put into the rubber compound that is more heat reactive and that causes the tires to maybe get gummier and then stick mm-hmm. a little bit more and kind of eat away or yeah you know what i mean like, i mean that's that's why i don't envy the task that goodyear has ahead of them when it comes to all these racetracks because asphalt everywhere is totally different and the way the tires re- will react to them is totally different based on how the asphalt is based on the temperature of the of the asphalt i mean there's multiple variables that are ever changing and you really can't predict it until you're there on the day you know um uh yeah i i don't envy it one bit and i hope they take i hope they can take something away from it because i know that it like i know they just wanted to test how that compound would react i think they found out maybe during the day it's pretty solid maybe at night um go a little softer <laughs> uh, i don't know the other it's tough. the other thing too like now they have a couple data points, right? Um, mm-hmm. They have yeah, right. they'll have practice, they'll have the race, and then they still have the Bristol, the last two Bristol races, right? Mm-hmm. Look at how the tires wore away, and from from what we've been told, they were the same compound. They weren't the same production tires, but they were the same compound as they ran in the fall, and then they ran the same yep. compound in the spring. Um, again, there's differences because you store its raw materials and whatnot to to kind of make the, the compound, but. Um, there could be differences there, but I don't think they'd be crazy enough to have that big of a change that we saw with the Bristol races. Yeah, if it, if saw. it was if it was a matter of that, it would have been it like n- not every team would have had to happen at Bristol. I feel like there would have been sets that were better or worse, and I feel like every single team at Bristol kind of had well, the same thing going on. It well again, it depends on how they source the material and whatnot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, randomness. Also, the teams that weren't prepared for it, which, again, helps uh, practice. I love practice, but if we had none of it, we'd probably see better racing because no one would be prepared. Or we'd see two guys dominate because we also saw that in 2020, right? So it's like, Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And they they, they were talking, I think Joe Logano said in his interview, he did 800 laps of tire testing. (laughs) Insane. Which is just absolutely nuts like i cannot imagine like they must have just done full race sims over and over again or something just insane um hey it's worth it though. also before we get to the really really fun thing <laughs> the very fun thing i want to i want to know what you guys' thoughts are on like on the all-star race and like you know we've done we've gone and done one billion different things to this race we've taken it to different places what what do you guys feel about like how do you guys feel about that where should it go what like not literally location wise but what what do we do with the all-star race i don't want to say that it's run its course but it's kind of lost the like specialness to it Mm -hmm. and i think a big part of that is money because like for a long time the draw of the all-star race was it was for a million dollars and that used to be a lot of money but can, when you compare to like how how much money there is in racing over the last 20 years it's kind of diminished in i guess i don't want to say flair but like you know you're seeing you don't see the kind of chaos that you used to see in an all-star race and that's not necessarily what you need for a good race but that was like the selling point for a long time mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of lost that because it it's almost like a test session which I mean, it's less that now that we're at North Wilkesboro rather than Charlotte the week before the Coke 600, but Mm -hmm. it just doesn't feel special anymore, which is weird. To counter that, and I I, I agree with what you're saying, um, I don't 
we've talked about on here a couple times now about like the lack of superstars in the sport. Um, you know, a lot of times all star events are because you're seeing the all stars, the best players, the best. You know, and you don't always get you don't get an opportunity to see um, you know Mike Trout play with um, Bryce Harper all the time in the case of baseball or. Justin Jefferson yeah. play with Joe Burrow or whatever it may be. Um, we don't. We get to see these guys race each other every week, and mm. the the All Star race almost. It you know how people talked about the clash not being exclusive enough at one point, mm-hmm. and then now they've kind of yeah. like reworked it into this like oh we're gonna do heat races and gotta race your way in and there's no like oh man you gotta race your way in and all that jazz. The All Star mm-hmm. race almost feels the same way because. You know, I don't want to detract from some of these guys, but is Ty Gibbs really a, a superstar? Is, you know, like, even some of these guys that are winning every week, like William Byron, yeah, deserves to be in there, but he's not, like, he's not Jeff Gordon, right? He's not Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's not Dale Jr. He's not, like, we don't have those mega stars in the sport. So I think that also takes away from it. Also, again, a million dollars, it's a lot of money. Don't get anyone wrong. But it's it, it, like you said, Matt. It doesn't have the the ring to it that it once did. Yeah. Um. What was I? Gonna, oh my god! I just lost what I was going to say. When you think of NASCAR, um, do you think of Daniel Suarez? Do you think of? I mean, I do, but that's because I'm entrenched in the sport. Exactly, yeah. and that's that's yeah. the point. Like, all star events are supposed to cater more to casual fans, mm-hmm. and the NASCAR All Star races doesn't do that. And I don't think it ever has, but it's more apparent now than it was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I will say the one change I like that we did, I can't remember if we did it last year too. Um, only two people getting in through the all-star open. Good change. Three was too many. Yeah. Cause I, I at that, that. At, at that point you already have like two thirds of the field and it, it feels like you're only leaving five or six guys out at that point. So, yeah. cause I think back to the 2022 uh all-star race which was even worse somehow um (laughs) and the all-star open had like 10 cars in it (laughs) and we took like half of them into the main race plus the fan vote and it was like that it's like what you were saying about it being exclusive like getting into the all-star race should be special you know Mm -hmm. and you and you could see like in some of those interviews after the open um you know like talking to josh barry you could tell he was disappointed that he didn't make it in um, same thing with Alex Bowman, Austin Zendrick, like these guys that are on these big teams that don't make it in, like it hurts that they are not in there. Um, yeah. but if you want to look again, strictly from a fan perspective, again, not having those superstars, I think is a big deal. And it's kind of, I will beat that drum to the end of the, the earth that you need superstars in a, a one, a professional sport. And right now NASCAR is struggling to find that superstar. They have a very good opportunity this upcoming weekend to solidify a guy as a superstar. We can talk about that, but it's like, um, I don't know. It, it's it's challenging, and that's been their biggest challenge since the guys like Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, um, mm. those synonymous yeah. names with the sport have gone away. Yeah. And there's like candidates too. Like, like it's, I, I feel like, you know, Kyle Larson isn't the only one, you know, I feel yeah. like Ross Chastain has a chance because people still know who he is from the wall, right? From the, from the melon thing. Ryan Blaney, people, silver platter Ryan Blaney. this year. And it's like, yeah. yeah, what happened? You know? It's just like, what, like, what, like, I wonder what it is that keeps us falling short of getting that, you know? Because remember, there's always going to be a difference between a superstar among race fans and a superstar among non race fans, but, that will watch NASCAR in the spring, mm-hmm. say. Um, so, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Also, for what it's worth, before we get to the fun thing, one uh, my opinion on the All-Star race, the All-Star race has a place in some way, shape, or form. I think the problem with the All-Star race is that it needs to be so radically different from what we're seeing right now in the sense of, like, I feel like the vehicles need to be different. I feel like the venue can maybe stay the same, but there just needs to be such a wholesale change to the way that it runs to really let 
to really let the drivers who are the all-stars show their talents and skills the way that an all-star game in other sports does that I don't think you can do it the way it is right now with the current cars and the way it's all set up. Anyway, that, that's that's what that's how I feel. SRX. You're on the right track. <laughs> yeah. Also, one last thing before we move on, and one thing I wasn't really thinking about it, and I wonder if, until now, and I wonder if you guys feel the same, is one of the selling points of the All Star Race for the for a long time was the the marketing behind it was winning is the only thing that matters because it's just money, and I feel like that's kind of lost its luster with the win and in playoff format because that's mm-hmm. driven into your head every single week like you have to win no matter what, which is. Like, obviously, yes, winning is the most important part of racing, but, like, it's what we've talked about so many times where the new generation has grown up in this environment where you have to win at every single cost, second is not okay, when that used to be a kind of, like, like a, a rare thing, almost, where there was only once or twice a year where you were willing to just absolutely put it out on the line to win, and that was the All-Star Race and, like, the Bud Shootout and the Daytona 500. Mm-hmm. So, I think that might point. have something to do with it. So, yeah, I like that. I like it too. That's a good point. But you know what, Davey likes more agree- than that. We're, we're all very agreeable <laughs> right now, <laughs> and I can't say the same. <laughs> Shout for out SpongeBob Shorts, Ricky Stenhouse. Shout out to Ricky Stenhouse for first off following up on his words. Yeah, he we called a shot. <laughs> I think I think he I think like, I think that went into him doing he, it. I think he said he was gonna do it, and that was the only reason he did it at that point. Yeah, because like Kyle Busch was like, "Yeah, okay, man." <laughs> like he was like, "Sure, yeah." I don't I'll know that would it. that would piss me off though. What someone agreeing with you? No, no, someone just being like, because like Kyle Busch was very off. dismissive of Ricky Stenhouse. Him. I don't. Okay, again, let's. Think about the human psyche, not necessarily like, oh, let's side with this guy or that guy. Like, I'm not siding with anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm honestly, <laughs> I'm Team Ricky. I am man. with somebody. I'm team I, I Ricky. With Kyle Busch. He got he got dumped in turn one and two for no reason, no good no, reason, not no reason, no good not reason, no reason, no good reason. No, it, it was not horrible. Kyle, Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch screwed up off a of turn two, got mad at he himself, was, and he wrecked was in Ricky the Stenhouse. wall, and Ricky Stenhouse bounced off of him. Kyle Busch didn't bounce Kyle, off the wall no, into him. No, he bounced off the wall into him. No, uh-huh, no, uh-huh, no, no. Uh-huh. We're going to go back to the replay, no. and I'm going to show you, and no, that did mm-mm, not happen. Mm-mm. Kyle Busch was on the wall when Ricky Stenhouse hit him. Mm-mm. I was going to say, I, I rewatched it right before we went. We re- started recording, and, and I I think Davey's probably closer. Shut to up, Matt! <laughs> God. That said, I don't think what Kyle did after that in a vacuum is 100% like justified but i, I think there that. i think there this is the culmination of three different things which is one Ricky Pretty Stenhouse down. pushing people three wide on lap 1 yep two <laughs> Kyle Busch is having an awful year and three <laughs> these guys have history yep so i i think Fun it's fit. all three which, of those things combined <laughs> which Ricky alluded to in his post fight interview um, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, props to him for doing a post-fight interview. That was insane. Yeah. He got two interviews. <laughs> you you usually only get one interview. He got two. He got two. Sponsors are real happy right now. Hey, the only <laughs> thing I I've listened to, um, so I don't want to take credit, but I listened to Denny's podcast today at the gym, and um, I forget who said it, but someone said it. The only thing he could have done better is mention the icy hot. Mm. Kyle is gonna need the icy hot for the fist across his <laughs> chin. That's, that's a good one. Um, so, I I also like like kind of like in the le- in the in the incident that caused this whole thing. Weaver went back and took screenshots like right right as it happened, and really Michael McDowell just slid oh, right up. It's always and, and Michael was, McDowell's fault. Michael McDowell was like pushing Stenhouse to the wall, which caused Stenhouse to hit Kyle Busch. So really, it's all Michael McDowell's fault at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the funniest part. If you go back and watch, you can see like when when all that contact gets made, Michael McDowell is like very quickly turning two cars into three or two, yeah, two, two cars into two uh, with that move. It was really good, but the fight was uh, very fun. I yeah. I loved 
the, the dude the camera work from not just from Fox but everyone that was around it phenomenal. <laughs> they were ready. Ricky Stenhouse saying "Get my dad," funny as hell. Kyle Bush ending the the feud, ending the spat with "You suck just mu- just as much as I do." <laughs> Funniest thing he could have ever said. You, there's no coming back from that. Both of them, uh, d- as far as the fight goes, they both won. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um. Whoever wrote, so someone wrote an article for the AP and ESPN's running with it that NASCAR might suspend Ricky Stenhouse. Um, Doubt it. If they do that, why, first off? Um, Second off, can we stop pulling guys apart and not letting the second guy get a punch in? Like, for the love Uh, of God. No, 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 no. no. Crew members need to just, okay, listen. No. If your drivers are in a fight. You're wrong. Have you seen that Simpsons (laughs) meme? The two monkeys fight and just let the drivers fight. Let them do their thing. Who cares? Hockey fight. Drop the gloves. That, get in a fight. If, I don't if care. If we had a drop the gloves rule, yes. However, that is not a precedent that's been set in NASCAR. If you're a crew guy, that's your guy. I don't care if your guy's in the wrong. You go get your guy. You know? Like, if I'm paid by JTG to work with Ricky Stenhouse, I'm not going to sit there and let Ricky Stenhouse get his ass whooped. Well, you're not going like, to let him get his ass whooped. Even ass if he's whoops. the instigator, <laughs> like, I mean, there's, you go there's get your man. There's levels to this. There's levels. It's not like Kyle's just I, beating the tar out of him. It's not, yeah, no, pull him apart. There's a difference between letting guys fight and letting them beat the shit out of each other. I'm not advocating for letting them beat the shit out of each other. But let I, them fight. I think that this is why we need my idea of the drop your gloves rule, because like the only reason that exists is because like if you watch your guy go after somebody else in hockey, you know that, okay, well, the refs are going to break it up, and I'm not going to have to jump in there more than likely. Right? Well, like, there's the a reason why guy from when NASCAR somebody gets... is always there to break it up. Yeah, it's the but same saying, guy every week. I didn't. I didn't see many NASCAR officials there yeah. to break that up. To be to be fair to you, also like <laughs> how did how many NASCAR like I go back to the 2014 Texas brawl. It didn't really matter how many NASCAR officials were in that. That was a whole <laughs> goddamn mess, right? Like you need you need people to have this level of understanding. Like as soon as the refs get in on a hockey fight, the dudes stop throwing punches because they know like I'm gonna get kicked out of this sport if i <laughs> fucking elbow a ref right now like I, I i think if you set up some sort of code for fighting in nascar then absolutely but as it is right now or it's the wild west no you gotta go get your guy you gotta go get your man so. I'm, I'm i hate to be that guy but i'm with matt yeah I hate i'm with matt i i personally i hate seeing it person like on a personal level i want to see the drivers fight but there's no chance in hell, like, like in the from the perspective of a crew guy, am I going to sit there and watch my guy get his ass whooped and not jump yeah. in and, you know, or, like, especially, like, once another crew guy gets in, it's like, all right, we got it. We all got to go now. Like, it, it's it's now it's now or never. It's, it's one. Yeah. I'm so excited. I can't not stutter. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much fun. Yeah. Oh, I, had to, oh, I had something to say, too. Damn it. Talk more about the fight. <laughs> I don't know. Fight's over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Honestly. I was gonna say, uh, like, from a level of like of a fan, I also love when the crew guys get involved because, like, I want more 2014 Texas. I want more just <laughs> overwhelming amounts of people to where it is a full out <laughs> brawl, and you won't get that if the two drivers just fight and then they get separated. I want, <laughs> I want more. I want more Texas. Was it Jenna Fryer? Who was the pit reporter who was just caught up in the whole swarm of that at 2014 in Texas? Oh God! Or was it? Um, I, I oh don't God. think it was Jennifer. It, it was it was, was a TV it, person. Was it Kim Coon? Oh no! It, wasn't it may Kim have been Kim. Jamie Little. Jamie Little. Oh that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she was she was throwing bows herself to just to get through it. Yeah. Also, big shout out to Bob Parker's video when he accidentally flipped the camera <laughs> around at his own face. That was hilarious. That's his profile so, picture on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I love, Bob it. In the hall of I love fame. it when dudes can laugh at themselves, man. Bob, Bob's got to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Weaver's gonna that picture, that really funny picture of Senhouse waiting for Kyle Busch at his uh, at his garage hauler or his garage, like his garage <laughs> yeah. stall. Um, Weaver's gonna print that out and he's gonna frame it and he's gonna put it in the Hall of Fame when we're there this week. 
<laughs> it, my favorite edit that's come out of it has been the editing that into the GTA San Andreas cutscene where the one's like, oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a rare fight where I do think, like you mentioned, I think everybody comes out on top because it's like Kyle Bush cements his legacy as just being like a stone cold killer and also just absolutely giving no fucks because i mean being he dumped f- ty gibbs in the <laughs> race after that too um being that the funniest and, driver in the cup series yeah <laughs> and i think i do think ricky stenhouse does deserve some props out of this for a calling his shot and mm-hmm. then being mm-hmm. like i don't care that Ky- everybody thinks kyle bush is the biggest badass i'm gonna go try to knock him out <laughs> <laughs> and for all intents and purposes he landed a pretty good shot dude right? yeah <laughs> like he did it was solid and Kyle, Kyle yeah. if you watch the video, Kyle's like bracing for it too. Like, yeah, he's like kind of like trying to turn to like get out of the way and just <laughs> bong. Um, oh, man. it was it was up there with the haymaker he laid on Logano a few years ago. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tell you what, that race may have sucked, but that fight saved it single handedly. Yeah. <laughs> Best <laughs> race of the year. Night. Save the night. Um, trucks. Corey Heim won. Um, I wasn't able to watch. It was a decent race. Sorry about it, fellas. Uh, yeah, I heard. It, was, it was okay. Um, it looked really the, the little bit of racing for, we got in on uh, the right short track day race. Was good. It was good, you know. So yeah, it wasn't as much stupid as we normally have at a truck short track. It's crazy. Um, and then they built a lake in the truck. Yeah, Big, they yeah. Built a lake. <laughs> they had to replace. They had to drain all the fluids out of the fifteen truck. I think, like it got oh it got gosh. flooded. Oh <laughs> my god. Um. Also, That's... props. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that shot of Christian Eckes wading down pit road. <laughs> that was amazing. Was hilarious. Um, like a tsunami survivor. Big it shout did. out to um, Hendrick Motorsports. I think I think they were the ones that helped. Um, mm. Rodney Chillers was talking about it. Um, but Cliff Daniels and their crew helped saran wrap or plastic wrap uh, the SHR cars. Oh, the Stuart Haas car. Yeah. Because they weren't yeah, allowed cool. to be in the track because um, the Open didn't have any events on Saturday. Yeah, that's the, cool. So, um, that's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, also, it's weird, but it is is cool for Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out Lane Riggs P three. Um, we've talked about him Butterbean. having Finally. an awful rookie year so far. Butterbean. Finally got a good race. Yeah, and Brendan Queen Butterbean <laughs> P four. Who was it? He was beefing with from the back uh, to the front. Um, it was, I think it was one of the Gray brothers. He was beefing with. Oh no, it was Eckes. That's who it was. Uh, <laughs> hey, passed a bunch of cars, so. man. Um, oh yeah. If we take the reverse jet helicopter flight that Kyle Larson took on Sunday, and we head to Indy, Team Penske swept the front row of qualifying for the Indianapolis 500. Kyle Larson qualified fifth, made it into the Suspicious. fast six. Suspicious. Penske. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, man. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me just. On the 30th like, anniversary just, of the like, Beast, too. Just, are they like? <laughs> Aren't they like four tenths faster than the rest of the field? Let me just um. And there's also the stuff where like they allowed a new push rod in this like new suspension you, push rod things did last you season, catch... and then like Penske was working on them last season, and they outlawed the old ones this season, and then suddenly they're fast. Did Did you realize? Uh, did, did you catch Rossi's interview? Mm-mm. I didn't. Oh man, he he said something along the lines of, "Yeah, there's a lot of noise from those guys," so. Uh, it was great. It was great. This hat, yeah. this hat, kind of makes me feel a little. Uh, Joe put a Penske hat on, by the way. I did. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I forget. We're an audio podcast now. Um, I'm gonna take it off though. Put my um, put my good Penske driver hat on. My former Penske <laughs> driver hat on. Different issues. Different issues. Um. Anyways. Joe, go. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, five hundred response. <laughs> Matt, you got it queued up. Let's go from. Oh, I actually I had more I wanted to say about it. Oh, okay, go ahead. Real quick. Uh, a, uh, the way that McLaren rallied after all of their cars had like the same engine misfiring issue, and then, I mean, we kind of brush over. Kyle Larson's never driven an Indy car before, and he's <laughs> starting P five in the Indy five hundred. That's insane. Uh, also, uh, Renus VK's team's turnaround where he junked the car at the start of the day and then they made the fast 12 after that. Yeah, that was sick. Um, pretty awesome. I was there so, for that run. Yeah, that's so cool. So, um, sad day yeah, we'll for, see. um, what, Dale Coyne 
18. Uh, what's oh, the, yeah. Nolan Siegel. Not qualifying. Yeah. Wrecked on yeah. his uh, attempt there. Almost knocked Grant Ray Hall out of the race for the second <laughs> year in a row. Grant Ray Hall's team tried to miss the race. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sent him out with a loose wheel. <laughs> tried to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Listen, yep. man. That's what happens when you wear an Ohio State helmet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> stupid guys. Those playing the uh, Fake Racers podcast drinking game at home. There you go. Take a shot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, all right. Well, if that's all we got there, let's uh, let's go ahead and go from the shop. And so we got. Got a couple TV things to talk about here. First, we it was announced the kickoff races for Amazon Prime and TNT next year, so we're kind of getting little bits of the schedule here and there, which I think is kind of good. Uh, you know, feed those out to us. Coke 600 is going to kick off Prime's video coverage of the NASCAR Cup Series. Yay or nay? Do we have a marquee event on a streaming service? Are we are we okay with that? We're young, right? We're probably it's okay with time. that. So. I know, I know, my dad will be upset, but <laughs> I mean, any they needed one, and yeah, so they were well, going to get one. Yeah, so and then TNT is going to get to kick off their coverage. I said it last week. I'm very happy that I was right. Um, they're going to get Atlanta too. Uh, the second yep. Atlanta race will be on TNT yep, that one. Saturday night under the lights, um, where it belongs, not in the playoffs. Um, that'll kick very off awesome. the five week bracket challenge uh, that TNT is going to have also as part of awesome. their coverage which we talked about last week. Jimmy Johnson is doing the pseudo double. Uh, he's going to be part of NBC's TV coverage of the Indianapolis 500 this weekend. He'll also be on coverage for select cup races. Daytona, Talladega, and Phoenix, I think, are the three announced so far. Um, I don't know. Do we like that? It, NBC's doing weird stuff with their booth right now for NASCAR, it feels like, but... Mm. And it, like Jimmy's stepping into Dale Jr.'s role for the 500 that Jr. was in the last couple of years, right? Where he's yeah. probably going to be on the pit box and whatnot throughout the race, and he'll give good insights because he just ran this race. Um, yep. But I don't know. Do we like Jimmy Johnson? I, Davey likes Jimmy Johnson, but do we? Yeah, that's a dumb question to ask me. Uh, how do you, <laughs> Matt, how do you think Jimmy's going to do? Um, I don't know. So, like... I know Jimmy got a lot of shit in his career for being people used to always call him vanilla. And I don't think that's necessarily who he is. That's, I think he just didn't feel like poking the bear at all. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, Jimmy seems like, like every interview I've listened to him, he seems good. So I think, I think he'll do fine. Like, you know, they're going to have him as an analyst rather than play by play up in the booth or whatever. So I think he'll be fine. So, yeah. He's incredibly well spoken. He knows a thing or two about racing wheel to wheel, and he just got done driving these cars, so I think he'll be great. Yeah. Um. Okay. Kyle Larson's double is in danger. It's double in danger. <laughs> double danger. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun. That was a fun news drop to read in the middle of the day. <laughs> um. A certain former president might be probably is attending the Coke 600 as part of his campaign to be president again. Um, also, rain is in the forecast in Indianapolis. So Tony Kanaan's doing the refresher course, I believe, on Thursday um, in case he is, needs to be called upon to drive the 17 on Sunday because Larson's first commitment is, unfortunately, to NASCAR. Um, how, do we, uh, how do we see things playing out there? Um, you know the thing. The thing that's for Larson, he's got next year too, right? He's gonna yeah. be doing the double again next year, so he's kind of got that mm -hmm. in his back pocket in terms of like, okay, this isn't the once in a lifetime opportunity, but it might be, right? You never know what next year is gonna bring. Yeah, I also I, I did research because I remember we talked about this on the show, and I was like, is it two years? It's I think it's like I think they said it was like two years if he wants to do it again, which I'm sure if he can't do it this year, he's gonna want to do it again. But yeah, um, I, I don't know, I. <laughs> The rate, like the the pure race fan in me, thinks that it's horrible that he's considering running the six hundred over the five hundred. But we as have to, so as a man who is contracted to run in the yeah. five car, and that's his day job, like you got to go to your day job. Yeah. Can you, 
you imagine the 500 gets pushed back like two hours because of rain delay. <laughs> NASCAR is going to be put in the most awkward spot ever. Yeah. <laughs> you think if um it gets pushed to Monday that his double is the worst double ever? What do you mean? You think it's like the worst double? Like the worst one? It, was just, it just took no effort. Like he just had to fly and sleep. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were saying like results wise. Yeah. No, not results um, wise. But like if we wanted to clickbait it. Yeah. I mean. Wink, wink. Could be. <laughs> if, it, if, it, oh if it's postponed to Monday, it's the worst double ever. Yeah. Just you know, just way less effort. Mm-hmm. Kyle also, Larson can't do it twice in one day. Also, can we just acknowledge how stupid it would be if NASCAR were to jeopardize their biggest star attending the biggest like Kyle like Kyle Larson is the biggest star in NASCAR right now. I don't think that's an over exaggeration in mm-hmm. terms of just like it just everything considered and how insanely stupid it would be if the, he wasn't able to get into the track when he's doing the historic double because a former president who's on trial for corruption wants to go to the race as a guest. <laughs> like he's not even there invited. He's just going because he a wants private, to. Also, basically just a private citizen. Yeah. Also, not to mention how stupid it is that a right wing candidate is trying to campaign in the South. That's yeah, you know, a real great use of your resources, buddy. Because those are the people that you need to convince <laughs> to vote for you again. Oh man. Um. <laughs> so stupid. So. No, I listen. <laughs> just listen, man. <laughs> As someone that As, uh, did not like the 2020 Daytona 500 start. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, just seeing this entire story, like, it annoys me. Uh, actually, no, I won't go on my whole rant with, like, people associating with Kyle Larson fans and whatever but like as a fan of a driver who people like to associate with this guy who himself doesn't it just, it pisses me off that I was like, is this really what we're doing? Is, is this gonna happen? Like, <laughs> a, a nascar driver is gonna miss yeah. this race because a criminal wants to show up and for some reason they have to make fucking reservations for him i don't know it's just <laughs> gotta make way for his golden helicopter i can't yeah. i can't wait for the security <laughs> eat the rich that's what i'm saying of the, of the track do we, do we have anyone going on sunday do you know um there's some folks going i don't know the comprehensive list i know Austin and his party are going. I think Darren's going because why would he want to hang out with us? Mm. Um, <laughs> that, besides that, maybe Joey's going. Okay. Joey's probably going to the Wait, is Darren going to this meetup? As, as far as we know, yes. Oh, huh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's, I thought. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Consider too. this a call out post. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We had like plans to all stay together, and then he just posted in our group chat, "Oh, I bought tickets, and I'm I got a hotel with my cousin." I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, bottom split moment of the week, Joe. My bottom split moment of the week. Hmm. Has to go out to Ohio State fans for thinking that. The new EA Sports uh, college football game has something out against them. Um, because let me tell you, those conspiracy theories that I read were fantastic. Um, for folks that don't know, there's a shot of a Michigan player stiff-arming an OSU player into the into hell, pretty much. Um, there's that Then transitions to Ohio State's uh, quarterback from last year that transferred to Syracuse. Transitions to him on Syracuse. <laughs> It then also has a clip of Illinois beating Ohio State for the Illibuck Trophy, which is a it's like a wooden turtle. Um, Illinois hasn't beaten Ohio State in seventeen straight meetings. Um, <laughs> and then there, were, oh, and then it ends with Michigan hoisting the national championship trophy um, because you know they did that last year, but apparently that's a shot at Ohio State. Um, so Ohio State fans. Bottom split moment. You guys suck. I hate you. Go blue. All right. Um, That's another that, shot. That re- that reminds me of uh, Davey. You might be familiar with this story. Uh, back in like 2007, Rooster Teeth got commissioned by EA to make a trailer for one of the Madden games, and the trailer <laughs> just like half the clips had Dallas Clark getting run over in him or like trucked or <laughs> fumbling or whatever. And apparently, he saw it and was upset about it. So they made this like alternate joke. <laughs> 
trailer where every single player is Dallas Clark and everybody's like, oh, he's going for the game. It's Dallas Clark. Oh, who's throwing the time? It's, it's Dallas Clark again. And it's a great field goal, but oh, it's Dallas Clark. <laughs> um, I do remember yeah. that. that. That also does remind me of uh, if you guys have ever played the old, like, I think it's NASCAR 07 and NASCAR 08. And for some reason, Reed Sorensen has extremely low driver ratings in this game yeah. compared to everybody else. <laughs> like nobody has lower than a C plus, and then Reed Sorensen has like D's and everything. And I don't—he's the only driver. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome, dude. It's, just, it's funny when like personal grudges make their way into video games like that. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, Davey, what's your bottom flip moment? Oh God. Tell you what, I had a pretty good week. I don't know if I have one. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of one too. If you don't have one, that's also okay. You know what? I don't. I had a good week. Okay. I don't have one. All right, fair enough. My bottom split moment of the week: editing the podcast. There we go. All right, <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, but it's gonna be <laughs> preemptive. Uh, We're at 45 minutes right now. We're not the road to pro. It's gonna be a rough one. <laughs> Uh yeah, I don't know if I have a, a bottom slip moment. Oh my um, god, we're all having such good weeks. Joe's Joe's bottom slip I was moment. Just, I was other finding people. one. I was finding one oh. just for the sake of finding one. Like actually, I just thought of it. Um, it was it's kind of also my road to pro moment. But I think it was in this last week we did like a training clinic for my BMX team for our state race, and hmm. uh, and I won rider of the month which was pretty cool and i got this yeah. pretty cool i got a pretty cool custom made belt buckle that my team oh. made uh and then i lost this for about 45 minutes and <laughs> spent the half hour drive on the way home pissed off because i immediately lost the custom belt buckle that i got made and then it was in my gear bag so bottom slip moment goes to me for being an idiot and almost losing this like one of a kind thing so emerge pro moment <laughs> Uh, my road to pro moment. Uh, I guess I got a couple. Uh, I won my second straight state race, so that's pretty cool. Um, oh, that's a badass trophy. Yeah, yeah. it's like um, CNC laser cut um, or plasma cut. I mean, and it was uh, an interesting race because we did our training clinic with uh, local pro Jake Peebles, super cool dude. Um, by the way, his race with Ryder Santos, the guy I was talking about, I think last week. Uh, or maybe it's two weeks ago. I think it was the first time the two of them had ever had ever raced. Awesome battle. Um, I might have posted sick. the video. I can't remember. But he he and his his younger brother um, Austin showed us all this different stuff. Um, and when I went into my first moto, got a great gait, but I was so focused on like the new start technique that I was doing that I didn't do the other thing, which was push to the inside. And then I immediately almost got run off the track, battling for the lead. And had some flashbacks to Lamora, the race I crashed at earlier this year, where I got pushed out wide in the first corner, and then was like, "I gotta go." And then I was like, "Nope, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cruise, and I'm gonna go to the second moto. I'm just gonna go win that one, and I'll get to the main." I was like, "I really didn't want to run my second moto, but whatever." Ran my second one, controlled it, super fine. And then in my main event, I was like, "All right, guy pushed me out wide. I've got the inside gate. I know what I have to do this time." Um, Got the good start, got all the way to the inside, pushed everybody out, not super aggressively, but closed off the run. And then it was so funny that I had this, like, <laughs> if you ever watch, like, a cheesy sports movie where a character is, like, thinking back to, like, all the, like, my mentor taught me to do this, and now I gotta do, <laughs> like, I had that moment, like, going into the second corner, I was like, I was struggling with this, but Jake told me to do it, so I'm gonna do it. And then I did, the, <laughs> did it in the third corner, too. <laughs> the karate kid out. moment. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So... One was pretty pumped about that, so uh, yeah, that's awesome, so. dude. How about you guys? Big Who dub. wants to go next? Davy. Oh, why? Oh my god! All right, um, I got a go kart. Yeah, <laughs> racing go kart. It's fast. I haven't driven it yet, but I have like people that I've raced with in the past that were like, "Hey, did you buy this guy's go kart?" And I was like, "Sure did." And they're like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> that's a fast one i was like that's good to hear oh my gosh but we went and got it it was a two and a half hour drive out to, out to ocala and picked it up brought it back stuffed it in the garage um i'm not even really gonna be able to play with it or do anything to it uh <laughs> in the garage because i'm going to charlotte in three days so but when we come back we're gonna 
do some mate, general maintenance things, get it ready, take it to take it for a track day. I'm gonna run one billion laps, and then uh, we're just gonna we're gonna try and make a try, probably shooting for first race in July. That's awesome. I'm excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> Joe, unlike you guys, my week, my week sucked, so I don't have a road to pro moment. Um, Laughing at OSU fans. This podcast. Honestly, the fact that the college football video game trailer came out, um, that's pretty cool. I was very hyped. Yeah, everyone that. was. That's a thing to be excited about. Everyone was really. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. It, hey, like. Hey, Joe, track and turf. It's fun to like things. Okay. Track and turf, though. That's why you gotta like track and turf because it's fun to like it. So go ahead and hit you know that like you, button. Make sure you subscribe. You know what you gotta do. You gotta make. We gotta do like a series where it's like track and turf university. Team builder. <laughs> Honestly, that color scheme would go kind of crazy. It would. Yeah, lie. it would. They are gonna have team builder too. Yeah, I'm like, it's crazy. They like Joe's they're... dynasty. Let's play is gonna go absolutely hard. It's gonna, as hell. <laughs> it's gonna be great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> the worst part is Davey. So I'm going to Indianapolis. I'm meeting up with that guy. Um, Me. Game comes out that Friday. So, so I'm in my head, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, why did I make these plans as a joke? Um, but the other thing is no, like, don't worry. I, I guess, go I guess I'm going to, if you want, I'm going to pay an extra $20 so I can start playing it three days early <laughs> so I can start playing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Um, the price you pay to say hi to me. Right. Girl, I'm so glad you're making this $20. Deep, deep sacrifice for me. $20, man. It's crazy. How are you going to make that back? To, by making sure people hit the like button on this video. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following, watching, doing all those things. Help support us here on JTN. Davey might have some news about some other stuff going on here. This is Track and Turf. I said JTN. This is Track and Turf. You can also you can follow JTN, Joe, Joe Network. We'd appreciate it if you did that. Friends over at JTN. The boss is over at JTN, let's say. True. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, might have some other fun stuff coming up here on Track and Turf. I promise you there is stuff coming. It's just life is hectic right now for everyone, it seems like. Uh, I'm going on a like two-week-long trip here in a week. Um, so that's fun. Yes. Davey's going away. Matt is kicking ass at the BMX track. So I try. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on, so this was not the time to just be like, hey, let's shake up our content game. But hey, we're doing it. We're trying. <laughs> we pulled, It was about ripping the Band-Aid off, and the Band-Aid has been ripped off. Davey, where can the they get more from you? Foundations are here. Uh, Davey Hazard on uh, on Twitter. Fake Racers on Twitter as well. Make sure you go give us a follow and, and whatnot. Check out our content. Are we going to get any um, live content or any uh, IRL content this week? God, I hope so. I plan on bringing stickers and stuff and... You know, hopefully some of the some of the friends of the show post some stuff, or at least send me pictures of the stuff that they do with the stickers. Um, otherwise, God, I, I just need to find something to stream on Twitch. But I'm not going to be streaming for a hot minute because I'm going to be gone. Um, but D7H Fiber with the ER at the end, um, and keep an eye on the Trackership channel. I I don't. Maybe we wait to announce this in a more refined way. But there are some there are some fun things coming. For sure, um, I'll give you the, to give you a little hint. We've talked about it on the show before, but it's, there's some stuff coming. Have we talked about it on the show before? Not or was that what like we're doing. Posts? Not what we're doing, but like the thing to do with it. If we're talking about the same thing, mm. maybe we are. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll debrief in a couple minutes here. <laughs> Sorry, we just totally oh. confused the audience. <laughs> All I know is when you guys see the announcement, you're gonna be like, "Hey, yo, cars, what's this?" But then after you watch it, you're going to be like, mm, that's what <laughs> so. Matthew, where can they get more from you? Uh, you know, that is a good question. Uh, <laughs> At msteelman51 on yeah. Twitter. Um, that's about it. Always good for I mean, like a one banger of a tweet a week. Yeah, I made, I, made quality, an Instagram, not I made an Instagram post for the first time in like two years, and that was purely so I could get Ryder Santos to follow me so I could send him a video. <laughs> so... Just because I had That's to be awesome. mutuals with him, and I was like, "Yo, let me get." So, um, but yeah, uh, 
God, I feel like I was brainstorming ideas for videos the other day, and then I did not write any of them down because I'm an idiot. I finally downloaded a notes lesson. app onto my phone, by the way, guys. So that is uh, it a is good idea. It is over <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> now Those actually to-do be able lists to, are going to go crazy. They're going to go crazy, and then I'm actually going to have a reason and not forget things. It's going to be great. I made a grocery list today, guys. I'm, I'm not going to starve this week. All right. Again. Like, follow, subscribe, do all those things. Help support us here on Track and Turf. We appreciate you so, so much here on the Fake Racers Podcast. Um, be on the lookout. Again, great content coming up. Follow Johto Network on TikTok and Instagram. And then Track and Turf on X. And I think that's it. So, um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, late late next week, too. It'll be Wednesday, probably. Or yeah, because I'm gone forever. I don't know. We'll see. Bye. Goodbye.